we were constantly forced to make our way into the water below the raft to check the ropes and centerboards. This was an unpleasant task. Two men had to stand by and pull the diver up by his feet should a shark launch an unexpected attack. And had they failed to be vigilant and quick enough, the diver would have suffered the same fate as this fish dangling on a hook astern. With a snap of its jaws, the shark cut it in two. We were constantly followed by sharks, waiting patiently to pick up anything thrown overboard. We fished shark for a very good reason. In fact, as well as to try shark meat, which tasted like haddock, provided it was sufficiently unsalted by rinsing in water. The main purpose of our shark fishing was to ensure that we got the shark before the shark got one of us, should anyone fall overboard. Lorita's greatest pleasure was watching our battle with the sharks. Hooking a shark was no problem. This creature has a voracious appetite and will eat just about anything. But this must be said to its credit, that it never attacked unless there was blood or fish offal in the water. But if there was, it would attack anything that moved in blind fury. On one occasion, a shark even sank its teeth into a corner of the raft. Once a shark had been hooked, Hauling it on board the raft presented no difficulty, but once it was up on the slippery deck, the real struggle began. The brown shark has a skin so tough that it is proof against any knife thrust. To make sure that the great fish would not amputate a foot or cut through ropes or snap anything within reach, we had to tie it down securely. It would often lie on deck, trussed up, snapping viciously for as much as three quarters of an hour. And as we sometimes had as many as nine of these creatures lying on deck, it was often hard to distinguish between the dead ones and those alive. Sharks have small cat-like eyes on the side of the head and have poor eyesight. They were always accompanied by their companions, the pilot fish, which would swim unconcernedly just in front of those powerful jaws on the lookout for anything edible in the water around. Once a shark had been pulled out of the sea, his faithful friends would be at a loss and in time, shoals of striped pilot fish had attached themselves to the victorious logs and swam on ahead of the Contiki in their